Wow, it is finally happening right now. Breaking crypto news, guys. Welcome back to the channel. We have a lot to get into, and I've got a ton of different data points to show you why we are so excited about what's coming. And it has a lot to do with these ETFs, which, you know, I don't think we fully understand the impact this is going to have. One thing I've been trying to kind of wrap my head around is this is not a catalyst that comes and goes, right? This is a catalyst that keeps on giving. More and more institutions, and I mean big time institutions who can move the prices of crypto are coming in. And I want to share with you guys some very, very big information in this video. So make sure you stick around until the end because we've got a lot to dive into when it comes to big banks coming in, big institutions, just the adoption of ETFs and really crypto through these ETFs just in the first seven months for Bitcoin. Of course, Ethereum's a little bit early still, like we're still getting our feet wet. A lot of people still finding out what Ethereum is. You know, there's been a lot more uh, videos surfacing, having to explain to institutional investors or potential, you know, ETF buyers what, it, what, what exactly Ethereum is. Bitcoin doesn't have that problem, right? And it's been out for a little while now, seven months. We're going to give you guys kind of the breakdown of what we've seen transpire here. And we've also had some breaking crypto news come out here in the last 24 hours that I want to share with you guys. So a lot to get into. Make sure you smash that like button. Let's run this thing up. Give me your Bitcoin price prediction in the comment section for the end of 2024. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts down below. And of course, just give me any opinions you have down below in the comments. I love hearing from you guys after you guys smash that like button. And of course, None of this is financial advice, entertainment purposes only. So subscribe for more because we're always here rocking with you guys. Without further ado, let's get into the first piece of content that I want to share with you guys. And this is coming from a good buddy of mine who helps me uh, run my crypto breakfast club, which we do every single morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you guys are checking us out over on X. But this just came in early this morning, guys. Major banks are buying Bitcoin ETFs. 2.8 trillion in Goldman Sachs, 1.4 trillion Morgan Stanley. This is what the market caps of these big companies are. $600 billion company in Wells Fargo. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo have all announced that yes, they are contributing to Bitcoin ETFs and no, they don't plan on stopping accumulating. So what does that tell us? If the biggest banks out there are buying Bitcoin ETFs, they know where this thing is going. It's inevitable. The big banks are going to have to, at some point, concede to the Bitcoin narrative, to the crypto, to the digital asset narrative. And this is, I think, some of the best evidence you're going to find because these major banks are buying up Bitcoin ETFs. Now, this just in as well. Uh, on August 3rd, we got this news. This is coming in uh, from BlackRock executives. They even said big banks, wirehouses, and private bank platforms are already talking about offering Bitcoin ETFs to their clients this year. Think about that. We are on the cusp, I think, of the golden age of crypto, guys, and it's right here in front of us. Patience, obviously, is a virtue, but we've got to have more of a 10-year plan instead of a 10-month plan. A lot of people, especially with Bitcoin now, all right, everything else, way more speculative. Michael Saylor had this to say back in December of last year. Michael Saylor said, Bitcoin represents the digital transformation of capital and everyone is beginning to realize that they are under allocated to this asset class. And of course, Michael Saylor recently in Nashville highlighted his bullish case and the bullish factors that are driving BTC adoption here in 2024 He's been very adamant that Bitcoin is going into the millions in this next decade. And honestly, when you start to unpack what's happening, right, we've got four states now in the United States adding Bitcoin to their pension fund plans, their retirement plans. What happens when all 50 states do that? What happens when these big institutions, you know, just start holding one, two, three percent Bitcoin on their balance sheet instead of cash? What happens when Bitcoin actually overtakes gold's market cap? Now, we're a ways away from that. I get that. But we may be closer than we think because, again, with trillion-dollar banks 
already acquiring Bitcoin through the ETFs, it could happen fast. Now, we had some great news today in the short term that also uh, is impacting the markets positively. Let's take a look at that. Benjamin Callen uh, right here into the cryptoverse. By the way, shout out to Ben. He put on an unbelievable party in Nashville for the uh, Bitcoin conference. Tweets out here this morning, headline CPI, actual 2.9%. The estimated there was 3.0%. Core CPI, uh, the estimated was 3.2%. Prior was 3.3%. The actual CPI from the core perspective, which excludes food and energy, which is really kind of the core number that we look at, it stayed the same at 3.2%. So that was good to see. Markets liking that. Uh, Bitcoin's up over 3% right now, sitting just under $61,000. But Ethereum, very quietly here in the last week, guys, has been outperforming Bitcoin. Ethereum is up 10 plus percent in the last seven days. Bitcoin up 6%. Ethereum, very quietly up over $2,700 right now, creeping up toward that $3,000 number. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Now, this was a great breakdown right here. I want to end the video with this, guys. So if you're still with us here, you haven't hit the like button, definitely do that. Really appreciate it. We put out multiple videos a day if you're just stumbling across this breaking crypto news video on your timeline here. And it says here, it's time we had a frank discussion about the potential long-term implications of Bitcoin ETFs and institutional adoption. This was a great breakdown, by the way. While the price action has been exciting, I'm concerned that we might be overlooking some serious risks to Bitcoin's fundamental value proposition. And this is a narrative that always comes up. And I want to address this because many people look at Bitcoin ETFs as a negative, right? Oh, it's you know no longer decentralized and you got to own Bitcoin through the decentralized wallet. And you know it goes against the idea of crypto. And on one hand, I get it. But on the other hand, I disagree completely. I think the ETFs are more of a positive catalyst than a negative. Think about the dip we just had to 49,000. How were we able to reclaim 56,000 the next day? BTC ETFs, inflows. Without it, we don't have that kind of money, I don't think, in that short amount of time to move the markets up, right? Now, is there going to be manipulation? Certainly. Certainly. But my thing is, I think it's a net positive. However you want to own Bitcoin, whether it's through a centralized route or decentralized route, it's good for adoption. It's good for price appreciation. So Bitcoin ETFs were approved about seven months ago. Huge milestone for mainstream adoption. And I don't think this is a negative, guys. These ETFs have acquired approximately 4.3% of the total Bitcoin supply. So yes, the institutions are going to own more and more Bitcoin. But it's up to you. What are you going to do with that information? Are you going to let them buy all the Bitcoin before you can get some? I started dollar cost averaging back in April 2022. I buy a little bit of Bitcoin every day. Because I know the institutions are coming. But we're trying to get there with them. We're trying to front run them a little bit. And I think this looks unbelievable. More adoption, higher prices, increased legitimacy in the eyes of traditional finance people. This person says, you know, the centralization creep is in. I get it. I get the argument. And I, I'm with you. But I think what trumps this whole centralized, you know, conversation is they're talking about Bitcoin. They're buying Bitcoin. They're still contributing to the market growing. And we need it. It's like a necessary evil. We need the big institutions in order to take this market to the multi-trillions, right? Period. We need this in order to get Bitcoin above gold's market cap. We need this to see 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 million dollar Bitcoin, right? So that's the breakdown here today, guys, uh, so with some breaking crypto news with the core CPI data in and the fact that we got word that these major banks, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Wells Fargo, all buying Bitcoin ETFs very recently here in the past week. That is some big bullish news for the markets, for crypto, for Bitcoin. Make sure you guys subscribe down below. Also, if you're interested in checking out Margex, that's where you can leverage trade. You can use Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Solana, Caspa as collateral, whichever one you want, uh, as long as it's listed here. Links down below, guys, to Margex. Definitely sign up today, get started. And if you're looking for a trading indicator that works, this is the cheapest and most effective one on the market. I launched this a year ago. We've got hundreds of people signed up with us at XTalgo. It's a little over a dollar a day to get started. And it's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Links down below for a 21% off coupon code. Try it risk-free for 30 days today. 
XT Algo will help you with entry and exit points and help you have the tools to make more money in crypto. Appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.